Okay, so. All right, so for this one, I want to look at, um, I'm, I want a formula for g of x in terms of f of x. So it looks like what has happened is that we have had a shift. From f of x, we have shifted one, uh, let's see, to the right by one, two, three, four. And we have shifted down by two. And so how do we um, write that in our function? So we can say g of x is equal to f of, if we want to go to the right four, it'll be x minus four, and then down two we'll do minus two. So that is our function there. And then next for 17, um, a function f of x has domain negative 2 to 15 inclusive and range that. Find a possible formula for h of x in terms of f of x if the domain is that and range is that. Okay, so what has happened to the domain? Okay, so let's start with f of x. And maybe I'll draw a picture. So f of x's domain starts at negative 2 uh, to 15. Um, and then the range is 12 to 25. So we have this kind of um, so f is like whatever it's doing, it's doing in this region here. And then g, sorry, h has a domain negative 5 to positive 12. So it looks like it has been shifted to the right, uh, or sorry, to the left three units. And what's happened to the range? The range goes from negative 25 to negative 12, and so it's, it's actually down here. So it's actually doing this. So we have, uh, whoops, sorry, let me erase that. Okay, so this is our range of, of domain and range. So this looks like we've, we've had a flip about the x-axis. You can see that in the, those uh, intervals. Okay, so, so what we wanna do is we wanna say h of x, so it's equal to, so to flip it about the x-axis, we need a negative f of, and we want to do left three units, so we'll do x plus three. Okay, and number 18, the average rate of change over the interval from zero to one is four. Give the average rate of change of f over the interval zero for one for, for each transformation. Okay, so, so this one, the average rate of change will be multiplied by negative two. So if we do four times negative two, we'll get negative eight. And here, this plus two doesn't change the average rate of change. but the one third will. So it's gonna be one third times the original average rate of change, which is four, so you get four thirds. It's the new average rate of change. So this is the answer for A, and this is the answer for B. So you're gonna, so the, the plus two, in other words, doesn't affect the average rate of change. It's just gonna be a shift up and down. It doesn't actually change the slope, but this negative two in front is going to change the slope here, and this one third in front is going to change the slope. So we need to multiply those slopes by those values. Okay, determine algebraically whether the function is even, odd, or neither. So for even functions, we have f of negative x is equal to f of x. And for odd, we have f of negative x is equal to the negative of f of x. So let's see what happens when I look at f of negative x. 
f of negative x is equal to square root of negative x squared plus 1. Well, we know that when I square a negative, it's just is the same, so I can do, so negative x squared is the same thing as x squared, which is equal to f of x. So it satisfies this property, that f of negative x is equal to f of x, and so, um, so this one is even. Okay, in the first quadrant, an even function, f, is decreasing and concave down. What can you say about the function's behavior in the second quadrant? So if we're over here, I know it's decreasing and concave down, so it's doing like that. And so if it's even, that means it is reflected about the y-axis, so it has this reflective symmetry. So if we reflect it about the y-axis, it's doing that. Um, so we can say it's increasing and concave down. in the second quadrant. <coughs> okay, the point negative six, seven lies on the graph G of X. What point lies on the graph of that one? Okay, so let's plot that point, negative six, seven. And so what kinds of transformations are going on here? Um, so let's start with this stretch here, uh, cause I think that'll be easiest. So we'll have negative six, 14. So we've got that up here, so that's the stretch. Then we'll deal with um, this, which is moving to the right three units. So we'll go to the right three units, so it'll be 14, uh, negative 3, 14. And then this is going, and sorry, and then this transformation here, the 4, is going to go up 4. So that'll be to 18. So here is the resultant point, um, negative 3, 18. Sorry, let me write the function. 2g of x minus 3 plus 4. So um, on 22, I want to find a formula for the function g as a transformation of the function f. So the first thing we might notice is that the function has been, um, so we have this uh, vertical stretch by a factor of four, and you have a horizontal compression by a factor of two, by, uh, well, it's it's uh, half as big. So instead of being going to eight, it goes to four. Um, and so that vertical stretch is that coefficient of f of x. So we can say g of x is equal to 4f of 2x. So this number here is our vertical stretch, and this number here is our horizontal compression. Okay, so that's that.